thank you. Um, you know, as a, a child, um, one of the things I love the most about the uh, Methodist church that my family and I attended was it had a buffet. <laughs> no, seriously, a buffet, but not a buffet of food items like pastas or salads or desserts, but a musical buffet of traditional hymns and anthems and spirituals and gospel music, among a host of other culturally specific um, practices. It was wonderful. In fact, um, the musical uh, options that we had at our church satisfied our curiosities and our appetites, and everyone, trust me, was musically fulfilled. Even my grandmother, who preferred anthems and, and hymns to my father's love for um, the male singing quartet sound, and even to my own curiosities and passions for gospel music. Do you know what? You almost had to be there to, to, to witness it, to see it. But can I bring it to you? I didn't mean to say it, but you look like you could use a buffet right about now. Yeah. Would you please help me welcome the, so a few members of my ASU Gospel Choir. So the first thing was there was the Evelyn Roberts uh, version, and Evelyn Roberts uh, interpreted the, the melodies and the, um, the rhythms in the most purest form. I mean, she was a classical trained organist, and so you dare not deviate from the printed page, right? Um, and so it was wonderful. And so she took this wonderful um, hymn, and she would play it in duple meter. Do you mind doing this with me so you can keep the, the meter? Keep going, I'm going to play. And so it sounded something like this. I mean, not bad, but then there was also Ollie Reddish. Ollie Reddish came to our Methodist church from the Baptist tradition, and she brought with her this gospel feel. And so she transformed the same song from this duple meter into this triple meter. Like one, two, three. Do you mind helping again? Oh, come on. You're naturals. Not only did it feel different, differently, but it also sounded differently. And then finally, there was Gwendolyn Bagley, who had this walking bass line. 
and the rhythmic text sounded like this. What a fellowship, what a joy divine. Do you mind snapping with me? Yeah. One, two, one, two, three. What a fellowship, what a joy divine. Leaning on the everlasting arms. What a blessedness, what a peace is mine. Leaning on the everlasting arms. Let's give it up one more time for the AC Gospel. <laughs> so you probably can imagine why I love the music at our church um, so much and found it so fascinating. But it wasn't just my church, it was also my school music program, where Janice Darty, our high school choir director, chose a variety of repertoire as one way to assure comprehensiveness in our music instruction. I mean, by the time I graduated from high school, at this depth, of musical experiences, from Western art music to pop music to musical theater uh, to barbershop, just to name a few. Uh, and it was just wonderful. In fact, I loved it. I absolutely loved it. In fact, I loved it so much that I decided to go off to college to study music education <laughs> so I could share with others this wonderful, uh, imaginative, culturally um, and educative musical making experience. But, to my dismay, music study at the collegiate level was a departure from what I had experienced uh, previously. In fact, when I got there, there was no buffet. In fact, my music was missing. I was excluded. Why? Because in many places, some music is just not considered worth meaningful study at the collegiate level. So you see, many institutions have this splitting process where they have put these wonderful symbolic um, boundaries of closure around what gets to be counted, and then excluding everything else that doesn't get to be counted. It was an interesting process. In fact, even when I was um, an undergraduate student, it didn't feel right. Now, as a 40-year-old professor, <laughs> ouch. It still doesn't feel right. And so just think for a moment about one of your own favorite uh, musical genres. And if I call the name out, would you make some noise if I say yours? Yeah? Yeah, so like blues. Or classical music. Country. Dance. Electronica. Yeah, uh, R&B, <laughs> rap, yeah. rock and roll, yeah. or maybe some form of, um, of world music. Now, now think for just a moment. Think for a moment about what life would be like if you were unable to engage with that music in some meaningful or some critical way. What would it feel like to have your music excluded? In fact, despite some new universities uh, putting into the program, their curriculums, and in in also into um, their degree requirements, those wonderful and varied musical experiences, in some places, a premium price is still placed on selected voices that count the most, like Beethoven and Bach and Brahms, while putting a discounted price on other marginal voices that count for less, like Gwen Bagley from my church. Me, Jason Thompson. But there is a good side to being excluded, and it's this that often the people that we have to exclude or that we exclude tomorrow or, to, or, or yesterday are the same people that we have to then include back in today. That the same people that, or the same voices that we separate yesterday 
are the same voices that we have to integrate back into our programs today. In fact, the same people that we count out are often the same ones that we have to count back on to help tell the world's and the nation's evolving story. That's good news, and that's why I call it the gospel, the gospel of musical inclusion. Not gospel necessarily in terms of a music genre like my own love for gospel music, not gospel in terms of a religious doctrine or a dogma, but gospel in terms of the truth. Yeah, the gospel truth, the ugly, bitter truth. And guess what? Here's the truth for you, like it or not. That every person, regardless of their social background, deserves an equal chance to tell the story, to tell their story, and to have that story count. Well, I've got a good story for you about the ASU Gospel Choir. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's an interesting choir because um, it's housed within the Herberger Institute, and one of the initiatives is this Projecting All Voices, which says that everybody should have an equal chance to tell their story and have that story count. And boy, did it count. In fact, even though at one point a gospel choir like this wouldn't count for degree requirements, this is a university-sanctioned, credit-bearing university ensemble that's really popular. And by popular, I mean that it just continued to grow from 12 members to 55 to 84, to now 125. Yeah. So, you know, I'm thinking about the boundless theme, and I kept thinking tonight that I want to change our name from the Arizona State University Choir to help me with this and see what you think, to the so shocking, show-stopping, devastating, history-making, electrifying, and also gratifying, not to mention satisfying, ASU Gospel Choir. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to make that fit on a pencil. It's going to work. Um, so I'm excited about that. I'm excited because these students come from all over the university. And they take Gospel Choir for, for multiple reasons. Some because they want to affirm their religious faith. Some because they really just love singing uh, together in this unique style. Some just love the social aspects of singing together in community. And for some of them, rocking back and forth and clapping on beats two and four with, that you try to do uh, is a form of recreation. <laughs> it's wonderful. And guess what? I value all of those varying ways, uh, uh, and those different ways uh, to be musical. Speaking of value, Amanda Williams said it best that, that ultimately what we value is reflected in what each of us chooses to pay attention to, to care for, and to sustain. We're doing that with the Gospel Choir and the Herberger Institute, but I'm curious about what you value in your own life, what you choose to pay attention to, what you choose to care for, or what you choose to sustain. Here's the last bit of gospel truth about being included. Being included does never, it never requires you to have a rite of passage. In fact, it really is your right to passage. Thank you. Thank you.